G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. Now if you missed part three, that's part three of the rotary table build, there's a link up there. Now you can go watch that first. Right, so now that we've got the top table, the base that it sits on, and the parts that sort of join it all together made, it's time to do something about trying to uh, you know, set up the, the worm and drive it all and to do something about attaching the, the centre section to a steel base which I don't have yet so I've got to get out and find one of them. But anyway, uh, follow me over to the bench and uh, we'll get on with what it is we've got to do over there. Damn, these birds are going nuts at the moment. Anyway, uh, there's a couple of things that I haven't really covered that a few are probably wondering about at the moment. And that, that revolves around this. And how the hell I'm going to retain it. So, what I'm going to do with this, and this has actually ended up a little bit loose. It's been in there, there so many freaking times. But uh, what I'll do is I'll go around, I'll just centre punch this a couple of times around here, possibly in there as well. And what I did was I threaded the end of this so that I could use it to pull this in really tight that way. So, like I said, cut little centre pop marks. It will get some Loctite put on it, and then I will pull it in really tight and allow it to set. And once I've done that, I intend to uh, mill out a couple of little bits here down to this level, and I'm going to right on the, the borderline of... of this edge and that edge, I will drill and tap a couple of small holes down in there and put lock, lock tight some grub screws in there that will stop it from rotating in there and fix it in there firmly. Now, then we get to this bit. What I'm going to do with this bit? Well, once I've fixed that into there, and I, as you'll notice, I haven't threaded it yet. Um, what I will drill, I'm going to drill and tap three small holes in here and use some countersunk uh, cap screws to bolt this to there but I think I locked that on as well so that'll fix all of that into there nicely and then this bit that's a fairly good uh, interference fit in there so I'm just going to lock tight that in there and it shouldn't go anywhere but anyway so that's what I'm going to do with these uh, in the meantime I'm going to uh, leave you hanging while I go off and make up a holder for that button die and then machine that down and, uh, and thread it because once I fit that in there there is no hanging on to this thing so I've got to get all that done before I fit that permanently into there anything that needs to be done to it easily will have to be done before it's fixed into there alrighty so I'll get back to uh, uh, when I'm done that I've got to go into town today I got rejected for the health insurance so now I've got to go and find some other options and the fact that I ride a bike it worries me that I could end up uh, with some huge hospital bill after an accident alrighty so while you weren't looking at today uh, I made this up and uh, threaded that thing with what appears to be possibly the worst thread I've ever cut in my life these last two uh, El Cheapo button dies I bought have been not only El Cheapo, they've been El Nasty. And the taps, these were sold as a set uh, with a button die and two taps. But to have a go at this, you can see it wobbling there as I spin it down. Look at this, look. That is just disgusting. Um, so I might end up having to mill that off and then make up a steel stud and fit it down into that. I'll fix this in there now too. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is uh, drill two holes in here and tap them M4 and get some grub screws down in there.
Alrighty, so uh, I think we can now safely assume that that's firmly fixed in there and it's not going anywhere. So on to the next bit. Alrighty, so uh, what I want to do up next is cut a couple of oil grooves in the face of this. I can't quite get the adjustment out of it I want, but it'll be better than nothing. I don't know if I'm going to do that while it's uh, spinning my little to turn it by hand. quite got the spread I would have liked but anyway so now here's the closest bit here so I need to spin that right across to the other side Remember that the top is nowhere near as wide as this face here. It's uh, this face here is well, the top face only 14 millimeters wide, and it comes across to about here. But anyway, that should get some oil in there. That'll do. All right. So uh, I made a trip out to the scrappies this morning and picked up this bloody great lump of plates. A bit bigger than I wanted and I'm going to have to mill an awful lot off it and it's an inch thick, 25 millimetres thick which is a bit thicker than I was looking for. I didn't have much else to, to offer. Now I've, been, I've made a few passes across here trying to uh, see how deep a colour can make without making too much damn noise and this end here they actually cut it off with a, with a gas axe for me because this was a much bigger lump of plate. This piece here came off the end of it. It's weighed 23 kilograms all up cost me a bit over 600 baht for, uh, for this. 629 baht, 27 baht a kilogram. Alright, so uh, I'm not going to make you sit through this. This will be an all day job, I reckon, to uh, to knock this over. At least an all day job, because I'm going to have to make 50 passes across there and I can't get all the way across. Uh, but I have to take about 20 or 25 millimetres off the width of it as well. So this is going to be uh, a job for a couple of days, I think. I'll, I'll make a pass and I'll bring you back. Yeah, I forgot to mention the reason I'm top milling this is, as you probably saw from the piece that was cut off the end, that this is all flame cut here and that shit's usually pretty hard. And this thing tends to uh, make a lot of noise when you're trying to side mill, so I decided to top mill it. Anyway, I'll uh, just keep up with this and I'll bring you back later when I'm uh, getting a bit closer to having this thing looking like something that I want it to look like. Got to turn the radio off. Man, is this hot? Far out. Whoa. Damn hot. Alright, clean up pass. Alrighty, I don't know exactly how long that's taken, but it's in the three and a half to four hour range. I had to stop when I got about halfway through because this was so damn hot, it was just, you couldn't touch it. Fortunately, when they cut it, they cut it on a bit of an angle back this way, and uh, so the 
deeper I got, the less I was cutting. So when I got about six mil and I upped it from a half mil cut to a one mil cut, and once I got beyond halfway, I stuck with a one mil cut and up the feed rate, which got me through it a whole lot quicker. Otherwise I'd still be going. But anyway, so I've had enough for one day. It's getting late in the afternoon, it's nearly beer o'clock. And uh, so tomorrow, I'm going to flip it around. Well, tomorrow's no noise Sunday, but we'll, we'll see. Flip it around and uh, just clean this edge here up. I've decided that I couldn't be bothered trying to turn 20, 25 mil of this into swarf. So I think I'll uh, do something I don't really want to do and get the angle grinder out, cut it off, and then dress it up. But anyway, that's it for today. So until tomorrow. Alrighty, so I was lying in bed last night thinking, how am I going to set this side up, these long sides to the machine when I can't even get the full length of the short side? And then I suddenly thought, well, I'm nearly all the way forward to machine where I'm set up here now. So I came in here this morning, I got the tape out, and I think we can see that black, that blue mark just there. And I uh, measured how far I got up here, and then measured that back up here, and found that with the 100 mil travel I've got in here, I can actually get down to that mark and just beyond it. So the centre of that cutter is just beyond that mark. So there I'm going to, uh, I got halfway through it before my wife had a crack at me about being no noise Sunday. So I had to stop. Uh, so I'll finish that tomorrow morning and I won't bother filming any of it. And then I'll run that uh, four flute cutter along and smooth it up. That will then give me somewhere to run a gauge along when I set it up this way and I'll be able to get all the way from, from this edge right up to there to finish it off and hopefully I can blend it together. These edges are, are not particularly important, in fact none of the outside edges are. I'm going to just make this the same width as the table is. Not exactly the flattest of surfaces but I, don't, I can never get a decent side mill cut going in, in, uh, in white. But anyway, so I knocked all that off there this morning, I finished it off, it's not a real smooth surface either. I'm glad I had to think about this last night, I kept thinking, oh, will I have room for a clamp up here? And the answer was no I don't. So uh, while I still had all set up this way this morning, I milled a slot in here so that I could use that slot to bolt it down. But anyway, uh, stinking hot in here and I need to turn the fan on because I've got all the doors closed and I am just sweating profusely. So I'm not going to bother filming any of this. I've showed you enough of this stuff already. So. Well, there we have it, viewers. Stuffed up. I forgot to lock the bloody Z axis, which made it fall forward a little bit, so I've got a bit more of a step there. Although that step is not as bad as it looks because they quite didn't quite overlap, and there's like a little ridge there. Point 0.2 there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll get rid of that. Like I said, it doesn't matter. A little difference between uh, the finish, side milling finish with that four fluted end mill in Z axis, uh, X axis, and the Y axis. Y axis is always crap on this thing. But anyway, I'll sort that little bit out. Like I said, these sides are not important at all. So, uh, next cab off the rank will be to. Uh, I should, could probably come and do this in, but no, I couldn't be bothered. Uh, it's so friggin' hot today. And I think I'd be better off cutting this 25 mil off the bottom here anyway. So I don't end up with a step like this. But anyway, so, so stinking hot out here, I'm going to call it a day. The wife's not home, she's out for the day, and the door's at school, so I might, I might go have a poppy nap. Well, I have to admit, that went a whole lot smoother than I uh, thought it would, and only took me about... 10, 15 minutes. It was about 10 minutes into it and the power went off for 10 minutes but it didn't take me long to knock it off and I uh, can't believe how close I got. I came in from both sides rather than trying to cut through 25mm plate in one go. Mind you, I don't think they would have made it. Anyway, so I'll get this set up. We'll do uh, do this in next and uh, and then while I've got that set up, I'll machine that down in here 100mm and flip it around and do this side. And then, oh, and also while i got it in there, I'll uh, set it up and put another uh, slot in here. Alrighty, let's get on with it. Alrighty, so it's taken the better part of three days to uh, knock this over after cutting that back edge off this morning. I ended up having to flip this. I did the short part when I had it set up here, but 
oh, I kind of stuffed up, couldn't get it, get it even close, so I flipped it and ran it back across here and remachined that. But this all that just needs clean up the fire a little bit now. So we've got it all done with the two slots we need. Next cap off the rank is find the centre and try and get this through it. Uh, and then finish it off with a boring bar so that that uh, little boss that I left on the, the base plate will locate in it. So that's the next cab off the rink. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, say thank you to my patrons. Their support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the bottom in the uh, description. You can join up there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee. There's a link down there in the description for that as well. Or you could toss me a couple of dollars via that thanks button down there. Alrighty, so uh, let's see how we go with cutting a hole through this. I don't think the neighbours are going to enjoy that much, so I don't think we're going to be using this thing. Looks like it's a drill. Ah, oh, she moves! Well, it's going to take an awful lot to bore that out to something close to 60 millimetres. thing just lost its edge well that's done that a few times it's so far down in there it'll suddenly lose its edge and this is the final cut so by changing the tip it'll probably end up oversized although this is the bottom so it might be okay Look at that. Maybe not oversized at all. Doesn't quite want to go in there, I think. I don't know, fits in. Just does it fit in down the bottom? Right, uh, I'm going to try and be a little bit sneaky. Chamfer down in there. Really nice little chamfer there. At half a millimetre depth of cut, which is the most I could take to take 50 millimetres out of that, took quite a while. At least that's done. So that's pretty much this done now, except I want to uh, fly cut it, clean it up. Alrighty, so I've had a long and hard think about this and I can't, there's no way I can get up the full length to uh, fly cut this. So the only way to do it, and I'll check to run this up and back to see, make sure it clears this end, gets past this end. So I'm just going to have to make a series of cuts across it and just keep pushing the plate across this way until I get to about halfway and then spin it around, go back the other way. I don't really know how it's going to go, but we'll give it a look and see. finished but it's obviously not terribly flat but I won't make a citrus so I'll bring you back later well viewers it's taken a couple of hours and to uh, say it didn't go well is a bit of an understatement I had to flip the damn thing around because I couldn't get all the way across it and, uh, it's a hassle and it's actually cut it's uh, it's not flat We're rocking and got a high spot in the middle a low spot either end this is a bit of a hassle. Uh, what I really need is a new table, but I can't afford one. So I'm going to have to find my way around it. What I'm thinking about doing is, considering it's only clamped either end, is maybe come in a bit and just mill some, take some more out of the centre. So this, that centre part's, you know, when it sits on top of the table, sits up off the table. So that when you clamp it at either end, it can't pull it like that. But, uh, but that's the reason I did the bottom first, in case I had any dramas with it. I didn't want to end up with it problem on the top where I got to bolt all the table to it. I'm also considering on the top only milling the centre and just leaving the ends alone. But 
I'm going to go, it's lunchtime, I'm going to go and have some lunch and have a think about it. Alrighty, so I decided that uh, the best bet was just to undercut this a bit and to figure out how much to take out of it. And I've only taken 0 0.35. I just put the rule across there, held it tight down that end. I'm checking it was a feeler gaze, it was 0.3 of a millimetre bow in it. So I've taken 0.35 out of this. So I haven't taken much out of it at all. But uh, the theory behind it was. When I go to clamp it to do the top, and I decided I'm going to mill it like this on the top, I'm not going to try and fly cut it. Um, I'll only be clamping on 50 millimeters either end, and not trying to pull a whole plate bloody square, you know. So even if the table's not completely flat, at least I'm only clamping it in two spots. So that's that, and uh, straight edge. Yep. Just clears that centre now, which is good. All right, so uh, I'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. Alrighty, so that's that done. It took me a while, but uh, it's a whole lot flatter than uh, than that other side was. Although there is, uh, there's obviously a problem with the nod because there's like a little tiny little ridge here at the edge of every one. So I'm going to go over and clean that up some more. Uh, I've got some strips of uh, granite here, and I'll use uh, that and a bit of sandpaper, and we'll just sand it this way to take the tops off those ridges. And then I'll uh, blue that bit that goes on top of this and make sure it sits properly. Let's try it on there. Beautiful. Bugger. It's actually sitting on the uh, edge here. It didn't quite mill it out far enough. But anyway, I might uh, bring that back in. Just knock a little bit out of those centre bits. Or just knock a little bit off the bottom of that base so it'll sit down in just bevel it off a bit but anyway that's it if you've been enjoying this video how about giving it a smashing that like button and giving it a great big thumbs up well due to the amount of time i've spent on this damn thing this week on this plate i think that's about all we've got time for this week so uh make sure you come back next week for uh what will it be part five i think but anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you again next week bye bye